What's up guys and welcome back to Simple Saber Metrics. Today, we are going to be talking about something that we are all familiar with, but perhaps don't know everything about. The opener. What is this thing, and does it actually work? All that, and more, covered in today's video. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. Before we jump into it guys, just wanted to make sure you all know that the Simple Saber Metrics shop is live right now. In this month's drop, we've of course got a new hat, the SS Dad Cap, which is, as comfortable as it looks, available in both black and black denim. And, for the first time ever, a Simple Saber Metrics tee. These are up on the website right now, and it's only open for 72 hours, so if you're interested in getting one for yourself, make sure you hop over there right now. Links, as always, are in the description down below. Now, onto the video. Before we can jump into the numbers on how the opener actually works, we first need to understand what it is. For a while, this was actually more difficult to quantify than you can imagine. The idea of the opener is to use one of your relievers to open the game, without going more than one or two innings. There are a bunch of different reasons for this, but we will cover all those later. That description sounds pretty simple, right? Well, it doesn't quite cover everything we need to know. The issue here is, when you dive into a generic box score, there are tons of reasons a starting pitcher may not go more than one or two innings. They could be ejected, injured, or just straight up hit around. All of that stuff happens, and those guys aren't considered openers. Luckily for us, Tom Tango, known as at Tango Tiger on Twitter, came up with a two-step verification process for how to define the opener. First, the pitcher who starts the game, aka our opener, must not go more than two innings or face more than nine batters. Next, the following pitcher, which Tango named the headliner, must go at least four innings or face at least 18 batters immediately after the opener. There can still, however, be a headliner if the opener was relieved mid-inning and this new pitcher checks all of the boxes of at least four innings and 18 batters. So, what is an opener? I feel like we've checked that box. Now let's dive into some of the details on if this crazy strategy really works. So does the opener work? Before we can answer this question, we need to understand fully who is doing it and why they're doing it. Starting with the who. I found a nice article recapping the first year since the opener emerged in 2018 through the 2019 season. So what teams used the opener in that time period? In total, the strategy was used 74 times, mostly by the Tampa Bay Rays. They were actually the first team to use this strategy in 2018, and probably the first team that came to mind when you clicked on this video. If it wasn't, there was also that postseason game that the Brewers used in opener, but they aren't a team that uses this strategy frequently. I'll leave a link to where I found this article in the description down below. So that's a brief recap on the who. What about the why? Why would you start someone only to take the first inning? Well, from a statistical standpoint, we will look at the 2019 pitching stats breakdown by inning. Looking at the first inning alone, you will see that this inning has the highest ERA, most hits allowed, most walks, highest batting average against, both OBP and slugging higher, so obviously OPS as well, total bases, and batting average on balls in play. This is pretty much everything. A statistical way of saying teams have the best success on offense in the first inning. And this isn't just a 2019 thing, you can check just about any year in the past decade and you'll see the same thing. So utilizing an opener is a great strategy to implement if you have a starter who isn't one of your top tier guys. This is the only inning that the opposing team gets to choose all three players who step up to the plate. And in what order? And with all of the data aiding in lineup optimization today, you'll certainly be facing the top three hitters in the lineup then. Another reason for using this strategy is the famous third time through the order rule. I could do a whole video on the math behind this idea later, but pretty much it tells us that when a starting pitcher sees a lineup all the way through twice, the third time each hitter comes up, they're more likely to have a successful at bat against the same pitcher on the mound. However, in implementing an opener, that third time through the order will not start at the top of the order, the scariest part of the lineup, it starts at the bottom half of the lineup, meaning you could potentially have the starter go a little deeper before heading into the pen. As you can tell, the opener isn't just a gambit to throw off the hitters. There's some math behind it, it's calculated. It's even changed the way that war is calculated to help more accurately measure the opener in the headliner's performance separate to the guys who typically fall into the more standard starter and reliever role. But through that, I still haven't answered the question we started with. Does the opener work? 
And that's for a good reason. Looking at this full year worth of data, the opener was only truly used in 2% of games. That's not a lot. And the team that used it the most only used it in 25% of their games. Sure, if you look into certain players' statistics on how they perform as an opener or with an opener ahead of them versus other games, you can see some positive statistics, but you also may come across some negative ones too. The problem comes back to this 2%. It simply isn't a large enough sample size to really know. So to break it down a step further, let's take a look at the Rays. Has the opener seen success with the team that uses it the most? Of course they have, but it also has not worked. And the fact that it's only happened in a small percentage of games makes it difficult to measure its true impact. Yet. Since our Rays have been the forerunners in the usage of the opener, let's take a look at a few examples that their team has seen success with this strategy. First, before using the opener versus after they started, the Rays had the ninth worst team ERA in baseball. Since then, they're now constantly ranking among the best of the best here. Is this due to the opener in full? Of course not. The fact that they've seen three quality starters in Snell, Glasnow, and Morton tearing it up for them the last couple years has really played a large role in this. If we look at the guys who specifically identify in these roles, you think of guys like Stanek and Yarbrough on their staff. Both of these guys' opener versus standing pitching performance is better as an opener, but that's two individuals with not that many games between them. And like I said, our main example here of if the opener works is using the Rays. The Rays have a good pitching staff, so how much does this strategy work if you take it out of their system and use it somewhere else? It's hard to know right now. Finally, what's my take on the opener? Like I said a couple weeks ago in my video covering the shift, this idea challenges the notion of it's always been done this way. And I'm all for that. The numbers are generally positive surrounding this idea, but it also has only been used a small percentage of the time. It's an idea created by some out-of-the-box thinkers, and now that the seed has been planted, I'm excited to see how it will continue to grow. There are many reasons to use an opener. We'll have to wait and see how the data continues to compile as it becomes more and more commonplace. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.